Hi, this is Mark with SafeDayTrading.org. We'd like to get free information on how to safely day trade the market for real, consistent profits and change your life forever. Go now to SafeDayTrading.org, sign up for the free course. Again, that's SafeDayTrading.org. If you follow the safe day dot, you'll make a lot. And today with me, I have Nell Sloan. Hey, Nell, how are you? I'm doing excellent, and thank you for having me on. No problem. Always appreciate talking with you. It's uh, it's always fun. <laughs> so, now tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got to where you're at, if you could share that with my listeners. Absolutely. So, um, over 30 years ago, I got in the commodity space, worked as a broker assistant for a top uh, grain trader at the Board of Trade, I did that for a long time and then uh, went independent and co-founded a brokerage firm called Capital Trading Group with Patrick Lafferty. And uh, the clients that we serve are everyone from farmers to retailer traders. Uh, We serve money managers. Uh, Basically, our our firm was founded originally uh, because on the commercial side of things, we, we experienced a lot of money managers that were looking for infrastructure you know, front, middle, back office support. Uh, We also found a a big need that uh, we could fulfill by, you know, catering to the commercial space on the hedging element. So fast forward to today, we've continued to be in business because we're always asking the questions that need to be asked. What's valuable and meaningful to you? And if we're serving clients, you need to know that. You need to know what they're looking for and what they need. So we serve traders in the sense of, you know, trading software, trading platform, and, um, you know, continue to, to pivot. You know, so I appreciate the opportunity to be on and, and uh, share our story with your listeners. Okay. So when you talk about, so are you basically a backroom support, or do you actually trade and complete trades or what? So because we have a more diverse group of clientele that we're serving, so if it's farmers we serve, we provide them with the strategy that they need based on what they're producing and what they're seeking in terms of price mechanism to you know eliminate downside uh, market price action. So we work with them, and then we provide commodity trading advisors you know that are managing uh, through power of attorney. They're uh, providing a service to the investor, and we help them with trade execution. We help them with reconciliation. Uh, just to kind of simplify it, let's say they have 100 individual accounts. They're executing the trade in one account that then those trades get distributed equally, same price, average price, to all other customers uh, that they're serving. And we have software that reconciles all the data so they can customize that data. When I say customize, if they're an option trader, they're going to want to put all the Greeks in there. You know, they're going to want to look at more analysis um, in a format that they seek that serves their needs to best serve their clients' needs. So we have all that data that we provide them. It's transparent and, and liquid, and, you know, and um, it's been certainly a, a huge demand because what we do differently was that we set it up so the cost structure is attractive to the money manager as well. So we're not sending out invoices for thousands of dollars to do what we do. Uh, we kind of look at their pre-existing fee model and incorporate within that. So that comes from the commodity trading advisory space, and that's been a growing part of our business. You know, farmers, of course, have been a growing part of our business. Um, and then, of course, the retail arm, when COVID hit and everybody was in lockdown pulling their hair out, uh, that has exploded for us because we're not limited to any one particular trading platform, and not every platform is created equal. So our goal was, you know, what's important to you coming from a trading software uh, stand, status, uh, coming from a trading platform, you know, what do you need? And from there we would align the retail client either with the course, like what you guys provide, or we align them up with a specific mentor that has a style of trading and markets traded that would appeal to that particular retail client. You know, because, Mark, at the end of the day, you could bring in business all day long, but the only way you're going to sustain your business and grow your business is providing that value and hopefully having the clients um, trade well enough that they're not blowing themselves out of the water. 
You know, otherwise it's yeah. a revolving door. So it's important to educate them, and that's that's a key component of our firm too, to educate the people so they really get the the bottom line risk analysis and, and what they can do to control the risk. So do you, are you seeing um, with the supposed reduction in COVID, uh, uh, do you think retail is still going to continue to grow at the pace it was uh, before, or do you think it's going to drop off a little bit? Great question. No, I think, I think we've only begun. Uh, people want to take control of their own financial destiny, and I do see – the ability to work from home, and I don't personally feel that we're going to see that big of a shift going back into the office space because once you've got a taste of the excess time you've accrued all of a sudden, like no more excuse. Right. I can't work out. I don't have time. It takes me an hour to get to work. You just gained an hour. So I think um, no more watching reruns of Jane Fonda's workout tapes. But anyway, so I think the – the thing I see happening is people are going to balance their life more so they'll have more free time to educate themselves, to learn how to trade, and to spend the dollars needed to uh, to buy courses, you know, to reach out to trading mentors uh, so that they control their own financial situation. If they're going to take the risk, they want to know what that risk looks like and what it means to them individually. And they're going to be working from home and have more time to study all this stuff. Yeah. No, uh, this is a little off the rabbit path, but do you see this mostly with uh, millennials or do you see it with the older folks in terms of trying to take control of their financial situation? Um, my opinion is that the millennials are going to be a harder sell when it comes to justifying paying commissions, uh, to justifying paying financial advisors a fee. I hate to say it, but they're more willing to pay bigger bucks for um, educational material. And they're going to be more hands-on in everything that they do. I also think that the millennials um, are more prone to not owning things. Uh, everything is subscriber-based. Everything is about renting, you know, rent the runway, right. clothes, cars, Uber, Lyft, you know, and I keep thinking about the behavior of the consumer and hence why my company is still in business and growing is because you have to open your eyes and see those you're serving, how they're reacting to what you're offering. And uh, quite frankly, yeah, no, I, it's, it's the, you know what I'm saying? So the millennials are going to behave that way. And, and those that are retiring, what a better hobby than to learn about financing and be hands-on right. with that. So trading, I think, is going to continue to grow, and therefore even your business will continue to provide a service to those you're, you know, educating on this. Yeah, no, I, the reason I ask is I've gotten into this book. It's called uh, The uh, Fourth Turning. It talks about the four different uh, generations that are out right now and what's the difference is it. So it, it doesn't matter. I just thought I'd ask the question. So – one of the things now that we wanted to talk about was the importance uh, of commodities. And, you know, can you talk a little bit? Uh, I know, like for farmers, being able to hedge a, a crop is very important for them, and they do a lot of that. But there's a lot of other people that do that as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, to simplify it, you know, you got your, your corn farmer to wanting to lock in a price months before he even goes into harvest, okay? So that, that whole process is going to increase his business survival. It's, it's critical. Then you got the banks that might hedge against interest rate fluctuations, if that exists today, right? Anyway, then you got the airline industry. Their largest operating cost is what? Fuel expense. So they're going to uh -huh. buy a range of derivatives protecting them from rising prices, and then you have me, my, my great 401K, vulnerable to the elevated price levels of the stocks. So what can I do? I can position myself with hedging components that the S&P Options and Futures provide. So, you know, these are the type of clients that we serve, and I think it's an important critical element because you've got users and producers, and you have to know uh, in any business, uh, you know, what your cost is, and, and we've had – 
talk about costs. <laughs> I mean, corn's up 90%, crude's up around the same, bean oil 125%, silver 70-something. I mean, it's all across all of our commodities. You know, we have to have conditions like this. Lumber up 350, lumber whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, that, that tags on 30, I just read 36,000, whatever it comes out to, for new home building. Copper and all those things. It all impacts every lump. one of our lives. Um, do you do you see um, commodities? I mean, there's no likelihood that commodities are going to disappear. But do you think the retail trader is going to become more interested in it? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, commodities has been around for what 150 years, 1860, 1870 time window. But it, it's been around mm-hmm. long enough. I don't know many businesses that can state the same. Uh, but the industry has been around for a long time. Retail traders, millennial traders will be a key component to additional growth that I foresee. And even for your business, will probably grow because of the need to wanting to learn and start with the basics and then have suggestions on how they could approach the market. Yeah. So um, do you see a change coming? Well, I want to be careful in my questions because I don't want to get you in trouble. Um, do you see a change? <laughs> do you, I mean, is there the possibility that, I mean, you know, commodities, almost everybody, everybody, all the prices are way up. Do you think there's going to be a drop? Well, it has to be a drop, right, in terms of readjusting down to something a little normal. Do you think well, that's going to happen? Well, prices will always eventually get to a point where, especially in market conditions that are um, – supply demand, you know, derived, right? So there will be a point where they'll price themselves up to the point and the, and the demand will diminish. That's another attractive feature of trading commodities versus stocks. Um, so, yes, you will always have a correction, and that's why even as a trader, having open positions, open gains, isn't as, as important as how much of that percentage appreciation have you locked into your portfolio, I mean, right. remember 08, 2008? I remember looking at my 401k statement going, wow, this is nice. <laughs> Was it September, October? I don't want to look. And then it's, Less and, uh, <laughs> in Oct- and, uh, six months later, you looked again, huh? Yeah, right. Gosh darn it, why did I get out? Emotional behavior <laughs> should be the key topic to discuss as well, that psychology part of us making decisions. Yeah. And let me ask you, I mean, one of the important things is that I talk to a lot of people, and a lot of people have that buy-and-hold mentality. Um, and my question to you is the importance of, of uh, going short uh, versus going long. Um, that's an important trading concept that people should be aware of, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely, and I think one of the benefits with the futures trading is, as you probably know, um, even with stocks, you do have certain limitations on what you can do as it relates to selling. Um, you know, you do have restrictions, pattern day trading, things like that. We don't have that in the commodities. And in terms of right. selling something in the commodities, you know, one, it's easy to do, and two, markets do tend to crash faster than they climb. So, uh with the commodity trading, it's it's not necessarily so critically important. You know, if you're buying or selling, what's critically important is what you're forecasting in the market and how you're positioning yourself to protect against risk and being wrong. So whether you buy it or sell it, you know, you just want to make sure that you have your stop in place within the parameters that you, you seek. That's a comfort zone for risk and or any analysis that you do, you know, fundamental, technical, whatnot. Yeah. You know, and that brings up another question. I don't know if we're just, I'm jumping off the bunny trail again here, but um, the importance of being able to forecast direction. What's your thoughts on that? I don't think anyone's smart enough to predict um, the future of, of these markets, and I'll be really frank here. When we first had this lockdown of March of last year take hold, who the hell would have thought that we would have seen stock prices go up. And, yeah, I could analyze it now and and look back and say, well, the fangs and, you know, those those COVID stocks, 
you know, that, that create greater demand would certainly appreciate. But at the end of the day, your reaction wouldn't be what ended up happening. So what yeah. we rely on is more price. Let prices tell you. You know, get get rid of the news, besides it's healthy today, because who the hell wants to hear all the negativity crap and all the politics? So get rid of all that, get rid of all the noise, and just focus on price action. And that's why so many are gravitating to algo and systematic ways in which to trade, because you're, A, removing the psychology part of trading, which is the biggest, um, I think, caveat for a trader, right? And then, B, you're being more disciplined. You know, the key to be successful is to have a game plan, know your exit point before you know where, you know, exit in terms of loss before you concern yourself with potential gain. It's the exact opposite, yeah. I think, of what traders do. Again, my so, opinion. <laughs> well, my no, opinion. No, I mean, and I'm standing no, by it. Well, no, everybody has an opinion. Um, you know, the question I have, the tr- the other question I have is you mentioned price action. Can you describe a little bit what that is? Well, like we, one of our programs that we, you know, that I personally trade with my own funds um, and provide to customers is algo based You know, markets today are not the same in, their, in terms of their personality and in their assessment as they were 15 years ago. I mean, before, remember, you'd be digging in the Wall Street Journal, and I remember in the good old days, you'd get the front page of the Wall Street Journal. That would, now I'm aging myself. But in the Wall Street Journal front page would talk about, you know, beans in the teens or whatever it was. And I remember all the floor guys would be going, oh, that's it. It's, the market's been discounting everything. Today, everybody's getting the news around the same time. It's The Internet has changed the analysis. So what else you got to go with? you got all these algo programs out there. You know, a price is yeah. triggered, and poof, you're like, what the heck just happened? You know, you can't get news fast enough, and, and the, the level of the playing field is what it is. So in order to get ahead of the curve, I think you got to look at the price and let the price tell you what to do. By that, I mean... You know, utilize a systematic way. Don't think beans can't, you know, corn can't be at $7. I mean, a year ago, would I have ever thought that we would see the market conditions and the price action we have today? No. But if I would have just gone with the momentum and gone with the algos, which we did um, in many of the, the markets, but, you know, then nobody's smart enough to know at what price is, is, is going to be digesting all the bullishness and the demand will diminish and the market will correct itself. Let the yeah. market tell okay. you when, when that takes place. That was a long well, answer. <laughs> no, no, and that, and that's fine. I think people, you know, my listeners want to get an understanding of the marketplace, um, or at least I do, um, being an ex-history major from college. Uh, it helps me put things into a little bit of perspective. Um, do you think that well, we'll have the fluctuations continue to go on do you think that the the determination, like right now, of inflation is going to inflect them in in uh, be reflected in the market? Or is it already showing up in the marketplace? Oh, we're already here. We've been here. You know that. Anybody yeah, listening yeah. knows that they go to the store, they go to the gas. It, where it doesn't matter. Everything's cost more. I mean, even my Starbucks, which I'm a Starbucks addict, is, you know, 30 cents more. I'm like, did you put more coffee in this? Most of it's froth. <laughs> you know, everything you do today is costing you more. What? The glass is 30% bigger. Yeah. Well, you know, that's interesting you bring that up because not only have prices increased in your everyday usage of things, but you're getting less for them. I mean, there's less, uh, well, I'll take my uh, Twizzlers. I'm a big Twizzler fan. (laughs) It's half the size of what it was, and yet you're paying more. So, yes, inflation is certainly um, here. Is is it going to stay? Well, we know the Fed engineered market conditions have been, you know, supporting this with QE, and there's discussion in markets um, forecast that that may come to an end or tapering may take effect, and that will leave the market more vulnerable uh, because we've been used to it. The condition of what we've been fed since 2008's market crash has been in one direction, and commodities will certainly provide a value in which to diversify for when and if we finally reach a peaking point. 
Well, now I'm running out of time, but I have one question. I'm throwing a little bit of a curve here, but if you were to tell, talk to a new trader, what would be the most important thing they, they need to be aware of? I think whether it's commodities or stocks or real estate or anything, I think it's to understand who you are as an investor. And by that, I mean what your genuine true risk is. And that risk is there's always going to be the unknown risk factor, no matter how much analysis you do. So the only thing you can do is to diversify and understand what causes the profits and losses and what you're investing in. Okay. Now, how do people get a hold of you? Hey, it's free, toll free, 800 <laughs> 800-238-2610, 800-238-2610, or if you're shy and you want to email me, you could email me at nsloan, S-L-O-A-N-E, at ctgtrading.com. And what's the name of the company? Capital Trading Group. Our website's www.ctgtrading.com. Okay, now, I really appreciate your time, and... Uh, Thank you for talking with me. Hey, thanks for the invite, and thank you, listeners, for listening. Okay. This is Mark Stowers with Safe Day Trading. Talk to you later. Hey, everybody. I want to mention, too, that we have a YouTube site called Safe Day Trading, which we show you trades that we make with the techniques that we use. You can also send me questions that you might have at mark at safedaytrading.org. Anyway, talk to you later.